Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Maisie the dog groomer and I thought I'm gonna start a little YouTube channel ignore my mum's doll's head in the corner that is actually kind of scary um she's a hairdresser i thought i'd start a little youtube channel to show even more about what goes on in grooming there's not really anything on youtube that's that beneficial for grooming i also just think there's so much i can show you i show loads of stuff on my instagram but i can just show more on youtube just a little intro i thought would be good especially if you're one of my clients you can know a little bit more about me i think it's always good to know who you're actually leaving your dog with I think it's quite daunting leaving your pets with someone you don't know and especially when your average day-to-day -day person doesn't really know what goes on in grooming so it's probably terrifying leaving your dog with someone like dogs are like babies to all of us now. I'm going to give a little background of my history so I'm 24 and I started grooming in 2019 I believe maybe it may have been 2018 but I'm pretty sure it was 2019 that's when I started my actual training I went about my training slightly different. So I worked for a really large company and they trained me in house, which I would not change for the world. I don't think I ever would have gone out on my own if I hadn't had all of this experience because grooming's actually terrifying. It's really, really challenging. You get faced with different dogs every single day. The dog's moods change every single day. Different things happen that you haven't seen at home or on the way to the salon. So there's so much that you have to deal with. And I feel like if I hadn't had so much experience in a salon with different groomers i probably wouldn't have ever gone on my own how the company worked was it broke your grooming qualification down into three segments so your first segment would be just bathing brushing and getting used to handling the dog most of the grooming is actually learning how to handle dog and dog behaviors which is so so important and if you can't understand triggers and how to handle the dog and handle your own energy grooming is going to be super difficult so I did that for around, I'd say between three and six months. I literally just bathed, brushed, dried the dogs, got used to all their behaviors, different breeds, which was fab for me because when you start grooming on your own, it's so scary because you don't want to injure the dog. You don't want to hurt the dog. This dog is, is your responsibility. So when you first start grooming, that's really, really quite scary because they're a lot of the time quite unpredictable. Anything can happen. So you have to really be quite switched on. But my first three to six months, I worked in a lovely little salon up in Clifton. And I worked with some lovely girls who were so kind and so patient and taught me all my basics. I then had an online assessment, which was then followed up by a practical where I got assessed by the salon manager, which was fab and I obviously passed. And then I moved on to the second part. So the second part of my training was purely clipping so there was no styling and what I mean by styling is some breeds can have like a fancier look or they have a lot of scissor work rather than just clipping the coat completely off but just getting used to holding clippers is it feels weird I picked up the clippers and I remember going in my car and I cried and I thought oh my gosh I can't do this I'm gonna be a rubbish groomer <laughs> and I was so upset with myself because it just felt so unnatural but the second part was clipping. I went to a different salon to do this. So I'm still in the same company and I dotted around salons, which I'm super grateful for because I got to work with so many different stylists. I learned different styles, different behaviors, different tips and tricks. I just felt like I got everything in the bag, which was amazing for my experience. It also allowed me to work with so many different breeds. And it's, it's really odd, but dogs are actually different in different areas. So where I'm from, um, in North Somerset, the dogs here, this sounds like I'm crazy, they're really well behaved. Um, I have really lovely clients, everyone is willing to take on information and learn and really wants to look after their dogs. But there were some other areas that I went to where the dogs weren't so much a priority in people's lives. So the behaviour obviously was reflected when you were grooming and they were a lot more challenging. But I'm so grateful for that because now when I'm on my own, I know how to deal with situations. But my second part was clipping. And then I think I had to clip three dogs and then I also had to do another online assessment. So it's like a written assessment, but you just send it off online. And then again, I got assessed by another salon manager. And then I passed that one. I then moved to my third, I think I moved to a third salon, but I, I worked in about six. So I worked with so many different groomers because I just, if anyone needed cover or sick, or anything like that, I would just sit to the salons. I actually really enjoyed it. I like jotting around, meeting new people. 
My third assessment, I was based closer to home, which I was really grateful for, in a salon that I really, really wanted to be in. It's quite a busy salon, the last one I was in, um, like fully booked months in advance. The pace is pretty fast. They get loads of different breeds coming in and out. And that's where I did my final assessment where the person that was in charge of grooming across the whole company comes in and basically critiques your work and says whether you pass or not, which I was absolutely terrified about, if I'm honest, because this salon was so busy that I was in, it was quite hard to get as many tips as I needed to do my practical assessment. So I was super nervous about this assessment, but obviously I passed it and then I become qualified. But I was training nearly two years, so the process was super slow. It was over a really long time period, but I couldn't be more grateful for that. I think people are so brave when they do these shorter courses because there's so much to learn with grooming and you, you're constantly learning. You There's constant new styles coming out, there's new ways of training, and that's what really excited me. I love learning, I like doing different stuff all the time, so I needed a job that was gonna be learn new stuff with continuously, which grooming definitely, definitely does. Well, I passed my assessment, and then I was qualified and then I could groom any dogs I wanted in any style I wanted. And then in April this year, I left and set up my own business. This was super scary because I actually quit. It was quite a rash decision. I think when you work for anyone, large or small company, there's always going to be something that you're not keen on or you don't like yourself because it's not your business. And it was just getting to the point where I was actually feeling quite stressed and anxious about going to work. and. I know for a fact if those feelings are coming up, I need to act on it. I'm not going to let myself fall back into an anxious mess. So I was really upset. I was having quite a stressful time and I called one of my other grooming friends who didn't work for the business and I just said, I'm super stressed. And two days later, she texted me and said, come and work with me. And I was like, geez, I honestly don't know if I can do this. This is a huge step. I literally had my paycheck to get me through the month and that was it. So I actually handed in my notice two days after, didn't have a clue what I was doing, don't know how to run a business, don't know how to set up a business. And I started working with my friend. Luckily, we're in quite a small town, so word, word gets around pretty quick when there's a new groomer. And I think all the groomers here were kind of in need of a new groomer because there were so many puppies over lockdown. So I kind of started at a, a really good time on my own, then begged and begged and begged my mother to use a space in her house, which she wasn't too keen about. Um, I live with my boyfriend and I work from my mum's house, which she kindly eventually let me use, but it did take a lot of convincing. I think, firstly, she was con concerned because she also owns her own business and I think she understands how incredibly, insanely hard it is. And I think self-employed life is so glamorized, but it's actually, wild and i also just think she was worried that there's gonna be like dogs running around the house which there isn't because we're in a separate building but we're all okay now i think because my business has kind of kicked off we're we're all good that's like my grooming background i started grooming because i have a i have an artistic background i studied art for a long time i did all artistic subjects when i was in, stu in college and then i did a foundation degree in illustration but I also delved into fine art and video editing in those periods. After I did my foundation degree, I deferred my spots. I got into all the unis I wanted, but I deferred them just because there was something in me that was telling me that that wasn't right. I wasn't sure what avenue I wanted to go down. And I, But I had a year out, I went traveling, realized traveling was not for me and I'm definitely a home bird. I knew for ages that I've wanted my own business. I wanted a job that I could work around my lifestyle if i ever had children or a family i could work that around my business hours i also wanted free time because my mental health is so important to me and working ever i mean i'm self-employed so i'm constantly working but it's different it's different i can actually take time away from grooming to do stuff like this like film and create media and go outside and have lunch with my friends if I want to. So that's that's kind of the lifestyle that I wanted to create, which I didn't really think would happen for about five years, but it's happened. We're rolling with it and I'm kind of excited and I'm here for it. I traveled for about, oh, I had a year out and then I did a few jobs in between 
and I finally decided that I wanted to do grooming. I started grooming, one, because it was creative and it kind of f filled that gap that I was missing. I think when you're a creative person, you always end up going back to it somehow. And also I was highly, highly anxious when I started working in the pet industry and there's so much going on in the pet industry. It was such a distraction from my anxiety. It was actually calming me down. So when I actually started grooming and my anxiety started to decrease, I was like, wow, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is the job for me. I need to stay in this business. And I even find now, if I, if I feel myself getting anxious or I feel myself panicking, my brain straight away is going, you need the dogs, you need the dogs, you need to get back to the dogs. I hope you enjoy. If you do, give a like and a subscribe.